Hi, my Cincinnati violins. Um, this week we are doing something extra fun and cool, which is that we are doing videos that we can share and have our family members participate in. So I thought since you are stuck at home all day, every day, having to homeschool your parents and all kinds of other things like that, uh, that it would be pretty cool if you could also teach them how to play violin. So we're gonna do a series of videos this week that will be walking you through teaching a any member of your household, parent, sibling, aunt, uncle, friend, absolutely anyone, how to play the violin. We're gonna do uh, the basics of holding the instrument, holding the bow, plucking. We're gonna learn the ant song and seesaw. So I'm really excited and I hope that you can find somebody who will uh, go on this violin journey with you. All right, first things first, choose a member of your household who you are going to teach the violin to this week. This is my husband, David. Hello. And David has heard me play the violin for many years and he's picked up my violin a few times, but he's never had a lesson. And uh, so this will, he's a beginner. We are starting from today. And we're gonna start with the absolute basics of the instrument. So, let's, um, actually, actually, we're gonna start by putting our bows down. So, we don't even need to pick them up in the first place, actually, not yet. So go ahead and lay your bow down somewhere. And then, let's talk about how we hold the instrument. May I take your violin? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, we're gonna hold our violin in our left hand, okay? And we're going to first discuss rest position. Rest position is very important. So, I want you to hold the instrument from the bottom like this to support the weight and put, have your, your family member put their thumb around the back of the neck as it um, meets the body of the instrument and then wrap your fingers all the way around like this. And then you could let go and tuck it directly under your right arm. So it's nestled in there. It's really comfortable. This is rest position. Want to give it a try? Sure. So which hand are you going to hold your violin with? My left hand. Your left hand. Yep. You can move a little towards me so you want to... There we go. That was really excellent. You can actually tuck it under even a little bit more and it can be slightly lower. There we go. And don't put any pressure on it, but that's an excellent rest position. Thank you. Okay, so we can even practice going into rest position several times. So you can just hold your, in, yeah, you just hold it with your left hand as long as you have a nice, you don't feel like you're gonna drop it. We don't need to use the right hand right now. And let's just go right back to rest position. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna actually do some exercises from rest position. So may I see your instrument again? Thank you. So in rest position, and you should demonstrate for your family member as well, but once we're in rest position, we're going to do some tapping. And this just allows us to familiarize ourselves with the, the feeling of the instrument and get used to having our hand up here, which is a really important position, right? So you'll remember that we've done this many times in our class, and now you're the teacher, right? So you can tap up here over your fingerboard and you can choose the number of times or you can let them choose the number of times where you can take turns. So I'm gonna tap right now. You choose how many times I'm gonna tap. Seven. Seven times, okay? So I'm nice and loose, I'm in rest position and I'm gonna tap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And my fingers are all going at the same time but they're nice and loose, right? Okay, your turn, so go back to rest position please. Excellent. I would like you to tap 12 times. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna actually stop you and I'm gonna make your thumb a little bit closer and then wrap your hand around a little more. And we're gonna try again. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine 10, 10, 11, 12. That was excellent. Very well done. Okay, so once we've done some tapping, we can move to the next phase, which is holding the instrument as we'll play it. 
And here's something else that you're going to be very, very familiar with. We're going to go into Statue of Liberty, right? So I'll demonstrate first. So from your excellent rest position with your hand in your nice tapping position, all you're going to do is have your family member take their violin out from under their arm and hold it straight up in front of them as if they're holding a torch like the Statue of Liberty. And you want your arm to be at a nice upward angle like this, not directly in front of you, because that would mean the violin would be going at too low, too low when you turn it around, and not too high, just sort of so that the, uh, the nut here is at the level of your nose. Okay, so let's just go practice a few times going rest position, Statue of Liberty, and stay, make sure that your family member's shoulders stay really nice and low. Want to give that a try? You make an excellent Statue of Liberty. Thanks. Yes? Good. Back to rest position. Beautiful. All right. Now, from Statue of Liberty, we are going to turn the violin, just rotate it around, and set it on the shoulder. Make sure the head is still up, not, not down on the instrument, and can move in every direction, except all the way around, right? All right, so Statue of Liberty, tone, and have them place it on their shoulder. Would you like to give that a try? Sure. Okay, good. So that looked like it was a little bit difficult to make the tone. Mm -hmm. So that could be a matter of flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. So if we need to, we can always do some arm loosening stretching, right? Let's do a little arm loosening and stretching. So take your arm, your left arm, and go up and all the way around. And you might feel a nice crackle there. Three times and then let's go the other direction. Okay, now shake it out. Make sure everything is so loose. And let's try again. Last position. Statue of Liberty. Turn. Okay, good. It's definitely something that would improve with daily practice, right? But you're, you're doing really well. Can you turn and face the camera? So see how David's head is still still up from the instrument, right? But he's holding it out at this really nice angle. And I'm gonna have you actually move even a little further in this way. And the instrument can be angled out a little bit. And the degree of angle is really up to what feels good to you and your family member, right? Wonderful, okay. So that's a little bit too far over on your shoulder. So the angle changes from the scroll not from the chin rest, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, next step is positioning our head, okay? So I want you to just very gently put your head down, right? Good, and then can you rotate it so that you're looking straight ahead instead of to the side? That is really nice, and then see if you can just make your eyes go to the left so you can see your fingers. Can you see your fingers? Mm -hmm. Amazing, all right. So have your family member go through these exercises several times. Make sure that the head is not tilted like this and is not, um, is not angled to the left too much. It can be a tiny bit, but mostly you want it to be straight up and down, comfortable. All right, we're getting to the playing part really soon, but this is so important. So let's go through a full round of rest position to Statue of Liberty to playing position. Really nicely done. Can you just bring your head up a little bit and your nose towards me? <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Wonderful. Okay, next we'll be going on to playing.